Today's unscripted video is going to give a brief overview of using TerraSculptor for new people who have just purchased the software. When you first run the software, you'll get the welcome dialog, and on there there'll be recent projects for if you've actually created projects before, a set of buttons to allow you to perform basic functions that you typically do, and a set of links so that you can actually get support help or other stuff. I'm just going to close this here for now, just do a new project, 1024 one. I'm quickly just going to go over the user interface and over the menus. On the right hand side of the dialog is the toolbox. This is where we actually get into uh, camera control buttons, camera coordinate information, and information for buttons for selecting your 3D widgets. Then we have, of course, the main menu across the top. And on the right, we have the function panels. The function panels allow us to uh, have access to the cameras, the lights, the grids, the terrain properties, the topology tools, the terrain stack, uh, various scene objects, etc. Uh, I'm just going to start off initially with the menus. File, of course, is where we can open projects, save projects, open TerraSculptor terrains, and import files of more than 170 different file formats. Edit menu lets us do undo and stuff like that. Generate is typically the generators will create filled and gradient and patterned textures that can be used typically as masks. For example, if I go to a Gaussian gradient, and I'll just make it a white on black. Now, for example, if I was creating a island shape mask where it went off lower in elevation towards the outside, I could use a Gaussian gradient for that. There's a whole pile of different types of masks that we can create from this with, with these generators. And in the interface, we can actually view them in 2D or in 3D as well in the viewport. I'm just going to undo that. Anyway, that's what the generators do. They basically create different kinds of masks that we would want for various masking functions. Noise maps actually create procedural noise similar to Perlin noise. This allows us to, there's a whole bunch of presets and it allows us to create a whole bunch of different terrain styles. The noise maps have a bunch of basic presets to let you do everything from sand dunes to uh, mountains to lakes to you name it. There's all kinds of presets here to get you started in your uh, terrain creation workflow. I'm just going to create a basic terrain here. The next menu is the weight maps. Now, the weight maps are usually used after you've got your final terrain set up. What the weight maps do is they actually extract slope information and direction information and altitude information that's used for creating splat maps or, for example, uh, layer weight maps in Unreal Engine. So, for example, here I'm looking at all of the steep terrain. The actual mask here, the whiter the color is, the steeper the section is of the terrain. Now, I can view the original height map here. I can view the mask, and I can view them overlaid, so I can actually see where the mask is overlaid on the terrain. This comes in handier for weight maps such as altitude. Where, for example, if I'm going to get all of the low altitudes, I can view the original terrain. I'm just going to normalize it. I can view the mask, weight map, and then I can view it overlaid. The next main menu items that we have here for adjust, filter, modify, transform, geology, and erosion 
Those are all modifiers that will modify the terrain height map that you currently have in the editor in the viewport. They go from complexity with it just being the simplest changes, such as flipping and rotating, to erosion being the most complex changes. I'm just quickly going to touch back on the biome menu. What the biome menu does is it actually creates splat maps. So similar to how the weight map creates weight map masks for you, the biome actually can create splat maps for you. But back to the modifiers. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different modifiers. I'm just going to go over to materials here and choose a, a colored material. For example, if I go to flood level, I can actually increase the amount of flooding in the terrain. There's actually modifiers to do virtually everything that you can think of in here. If you want to convert your terrain into uh, Minecraft style pixelated terrain, you can do that as well. By the way, I have the main grid turned off in case you were wondering why we're not seeing any grid here. There's the home grid back on. I have it turned off by default. Every device that we have here on these menus has, of course, a really nice preview for it. There's an erosion preview. I can preview it, modify the sliders to get it exactly how I want, then hit the OK button to apply it. This again is on the menus which are in immediate mode. The Create menu contains a bunch of basic utility tools that perform functions such as packing bit planes, uh, splitting bit planes, creating contours, creating normal maps, creating splat maps, splitting the height map into tiles, as well as the Explorer tools. So for example, here I can actually create a normal map out of the main editor viewport terrain if I wanted to create a normal map of it, or I can load files into convert into normal maps. Also on the create menu is the mapper tool which the mapper lets you actually search around the world and find various terrain areas that you want to download as digital elevation models. So for example, if I go to Mount Shasta, which I've got a bunch of presets that you can download, there's Mount Shasta. Now I can download that. It says it's going to take approximately four minutes to download. If I click on the download button, it'll download it. I'm going to go ahead and download it now. I will edit the download so that it's faster in the video though. There, now we've just downloaded Mount Shasta. Anytime that you import DEM files or use the mapper to download a terrain, you want to go to the terrain properties, geoscale, and set the spacing to the GIS values. That will actually set your terrain so that it is the real world scale in the editor. Anyway, that's basically the next menu, of course, is the viewport stuff, which just basically turns our compass and uh, tripod off and on and gives us statistics. Tools let us do stuff like save the current color set. So, for example, if you like this color set of the earth coloring here going from water up to snow, you can actually save that as a color set. You can save the vertex colors. You can save a screenshot and custom screenshots. You can do a benchmark to see how well your system is performing. You can view the event log to see what errors you're getting. Uh, the Unreal Engine landscape sizes are on here as well. So if you're creating terrains for world partition, for example, all of the valid world partition sizes are here so that you don't have to do the math by yourself. And you can use these values in the resample and crop dialogs so that you get actual correct valid Unreal Engine 5 landscape sizes. Now if we look at the function panels, the top button gives us the camera. This lets me control the camera to do things such as move it around, move it to the home position. I can actually tilt it and pan it and stuff here. I can actually animate the uh, 
this specific camera so that it rotates. Then we get into the lights. We can go in and actually change our light direction and stuff. We get into the grids. The designers uh, feature where we can load in a texture that basically gets displayed on a plane above the terrain so that we can actually know where we want to put mountains and things using the brush tools. Terrain properties gives us the properties for the actual terrain, of course. It lets us see what the terrain is in real world sizing, etc. Material lets us get into the material system so that we can actually choose auto materials or textures, color maps, color sets, whatever type of coloring we want to do on the terrain. The terrain stack is where we actually add devices into the terrain stack into the terrain stack to be able to do non-destructive workflow. So for example, if I wanted to put uh, brushes on this specific terrain or I wanted to modify it somehow, but have the ability to go up and down the stack recursively tweaking the parameters and adjusting it back and forth and rebuilding the stack over and over again in a non-destructive workflow is what that does. The topology tools are 3D tools that let you perform functions on the terrain such as copying the terrain to a brush and then moving that brush to a new location and pasting it. For example, here I've just copied the terrain to a terrain brush. I can now move that around the terrain and repaste it at a different location using a bunch of different blending modes. I'm just going to clear that. The topology tools let you do everything, even including brush systems, so that you can actually create an entire terrain system all with alpha brushes. The scene objects let us turn objects off and on on the scene. We can turn on the fog, object bounds, various helpers and tools here on the scene objects. The backdrop lets us actually create a backdrop for the terrain system so we can do visualizations with really nice backdrops. Fog lets us apply fog onto the terrain. You'll notice that you have to enable each of these on the scene objects before they become valid on the So we can fog this right out if we want. We've got a water plane where we can display water. A mesh list is a tool that's coming. GIS actually gives us GIS information for either imported DEM files or for the mapper. So for example, this is a mapper download here of Mount Shasta. And it actually shows me what the low elevation, the high elevation, the elevation range is a bunch of other GIS specific tags and information that's all pulled out of the digital elevation model file data. VBasic is still a tool that's under development. It's going to be a basic scripting language that you'll be able to script everything from converting files to actually generating terrain all with scripts. Anyway, that should basically cover the initial first steps of getting around within the user interface on the software and the basics of what the different menus and things do. The main thing to keep in mind is the modifiers on the menus work immediately, whereas the terrain stack is non-destructive and you have to build it to get the changes. That's the main difference between those. So anytime I do anything on these menus, it happens immediately, right away.
For example, here's the new Dune erosion. It's currently single threaded, but will be multi threaded soon as soon as it's out of development phase. So now we can see that creates some nice dune like features for us. The final thing I want to go over is the toolbar that's just below the menus. This does a bunch of things such as camera control and such. For example, we can view in a bunch of different camera modes. We've got three different cameras to choose from. The orbit camera, which is the default. The free camera, which basically lets you freely move around the terrain. It uses the same mouse system as what Unreal Engine does. And then there's the WASD camera, which actually lets us use the WASD keys to walk right directly on the terrain itself. So it's sort of like a first person walking on the terrain. Then we've got our mouse speed and mouse wheel speed, uh, snap settings, terrain LOD. We can actually view the terrain in multiple LOD modes for performance within the viewport. Uh, then of course we can view it in 2D and in 3D. If we view it in 2D, we can choose what size texture we want to view the 2D texture in. So for example, if I normalize this, go into Terrain Properties, set the spacing correct. Uh, it needs to go a little lower. And I view this as a 2D. That's what it would look like as a mask, for example. And I can change the resolution of that here but we're just going to view it in 3D. But anyway, that should give you a basic rundown of the basics of getting around the user interface and the basics of what to do to create something. I'm adding some distortion. I've just added distortion to the dunes. Of course, we can always undo that. We can add some rain erosion if we want rain erosion on the dunes, which you normally wouldn't have rain in the desert. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks.